for some people, there's fear around stepping into the unknown when it comes to sexuality with a partner. But when you're on your own, the biggest voice you have to turn off is your own, you know, the voice in your head that tells you, you know, that's not how you do it. This is how you do it. And just tell that voice to shut up. We are back with part two of this conversation with Julia Feldman, who is a teacher, sex educator, and creator behind the Instagram account, Giving the Talk. In this shorter part two episode, we talk about how to broaden and deepen the understanding of what your sexuality is how to look at masturbation as a source of connection and pleasure instead of just release and orgasm. The idea that your sexuality is continuously evolving. And we come up with the ice cream analogy of finding new pleasure in your body. My name is Sean Galanos, and this is The Love Drive. Right. Just saying like, you know, I'm just going to like put an hour on the timer and and just sort of like be be aware of the clock and say like, I'm just going to spend time like touching myself for an hour in a way that I haven't ever before that it's a lot slower and to just like notice what comes up. Yeah, And it also seems like it's a reframe. Like I think a lot of people think about masturbation as like, oh, I'm trying to get off. Like there's this objective, like you want an orgasm, you're going to move on with your day. I just that would really help me right now, or I'm desiring it, or I want to be sexual in some way. And it's a big shift to think about like, kind of maybe taking many steps back and thinking about like your early sexual self, like when you're first developing, you know, as a sexuality educator, I talk about this a lot, you know, there's ultrasound footage of fetuses in the womb stimulating their genitals for pleasure, like touching your body as a source of connection and pleasure is something that everyone does. All children do it. And if people don't do it, it's because they've probably been taught not to do it or because there's been some sort of trauma that they've experienced. But in general, that's a universal experience. And somewhere along the way, usually once our developing sexuality shifts and we understand orgasm, the kind of way that we interact with our body often changes and beings, it becomes really goal-driven. Um, and that there's a lot of power in kind of putting that goal aside and, and just kind of enjoying the pleasure of what your body can do for you independent of any orgasm or goal. So yeah, I like that. It's, it is very powerful because it's also very hard to do. Oh yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's a well-worn rut for a reason. Like it works. You, you know how to do it. You know, all the curves, uh, <laughs> You, you know what you need to do in order to get that orgasm, and then you'll get maybe a sense of relief or of um, release. Yeah, relief or release or calm or whatever kind of like emotional and physiological concoction of hormones your body often provides for you after that. It's predictable. And there's something that can be really unsettling or uncomfortable about stepping into your sexuality in an unpredictable way. But there's also something really great about doing that on your own, because what do you have to lose? I think that for some people, there's fear around stepping into the unknown when it comes to sexuality with a partner. But when you're on your own, the biggest voice you have to turn off is your own, you know, the voice in your head that tells you, you know, that's not how you do it. This is how you do it. And and just tell that voice to shut up. <laughs> well, and that voice is is going to be there, right? You can always listen to it later. Oh, yeah, for sure. You can delay delay it for a little bit. Totally. That's the beautiful thing about like, you know, fasting or trying to eat a different way or exercising in a different way. You can always just go back to the thing that you know works. Absolutely. And there is no reason that you can't do that tomorrow and have that be the the type of activity that you're seeking. You know, there's nothing wrong with masturbating to get off, but there's also something really powerful about trying something else and kind of viewing your sexuality as something that is evolving. You know, I think for a lot of people, once they kind of understand how their body is able to facilitate an orgasm, they kind of feel like they figured it out. And there's something pretty cool about taking a step back and realizing, oh, no, actually, your sexuality is constantly evolving. The types of sensations and and um, and experiences that you can have in your body 
are always changing and developing. You know, I, I think it's something that we don't really allow ourselves to have very often. There's the idea that like you figured it out, you know yourself and there's nothing wrong with knowing yourself and knowing what you're capable of and also trying to see like, what else am I capable of out there? I've been really enjoying like prostate exploration. Very healthy. Also can reduce your chance of prostate cancer. That's awesome too. Thank you. And also can be very pleasurable. Absolutely. And also a little awkward. I mean, yeah, it can be awkward to figure out how to stimulate that the specific regions that feel most pleasurable. And especially with partners, it can be awkward because you're entering into the domain of anal penetration. And that's a really loaded topic to begin with for a lot of people. There's the fear of poop. Oh, yeah. And there's poop. I mean, like poop is there. There's the fear of poop. And then there's the poop. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. And that with a partner is like a whole nother level of intimacy, you know, like. Which is, by the way, super beautiful to be able to share share that level of intimacy with somebody. Absolutely. But first, you might want to share with yourself. Absolutely. (laughs) Absolutely. I've been reading uh, a book. Fuck, I want to name it, but I can't. Um, I'm going to pull out my Kindle just so I can. And then I can plug I can plug the book. But basically one of the things is like, yeah, if you're going to explore anally with, with somebody, with a partner, um, or you're like, you know, trying to get your girlfriend to like have anal sex, that that seems Mm -hmm. like a, that's like a common thing that some people try to do. Um, you know, have your girlfriend explore on, on her own yeah, before you introduce anything else, just to see if it's something that they might even want and they might not be right. But try it's like the same thing we're talking about like try explore stuff on your own and see how it makes you feel exactly and you never know i mean i think anal sex is a really good example of that because the types of skills that are involved in anal penetration are kind of unique you know in some ways they're very similar to other types of penetration in terms of like being relaxed and going slow and making sure things are properly lubricated but it's also a part of the body that lots of people don't have a sexual association with, or if they have curiosity, they don't really know how to interact with it in a way that like will really bring about what they want. So I think the notion of like taking time to practice on your own and get to be comfortable with that part of your body in a sexual domain is really important. And can be really fun. Oh yeah. And can also not be your cup of tea at all. Well, and that's one of the things I love to talk about, you know, how our sensory nerve endings are mapped in our body is completely different from person to person. So what is physically pleasurable for one person might just not be physically pleasurable for another. And I think anal sex is one of the best examples of all the stories that we have that we're told, you know, like, oh, they don't like anal sex. They must be frigid or uptight. Um, you know, like, what's their problem? And they'll and like it if I do it. Exactly. I, do it. I, I know how to do it right. You know, and the reality is that <laughs> for some people their body just does not reward them with pleasurable sensations when that part of their body is stimulated. No matter how good you are at anal sex, that might not be something that their body experiences as pleasurable. And that there shouldn't be shame around that. And there doesn't have to be a story about that. Well, the the beautiful piece here is that it allows people for their experience and that their experience can be completely different from somebody else's and it doesn't make it better or worse or right or wrong. Yeah. It's just unique. I mean, I, I love that so much. Just, just the idea that like, yeah, this might not be right for you. Yeah. And that that's not there's nothing wrong with that. You know, yeah. I think that there's a lot of stories that we're taught about, about, you know, not being into something and like what that says about a person. And if we actually just allowed ourselves the space to understand that, like, you like chocolate ice cream and I like vanilla and maybe tomorrow I'm going to like a different type of ice cream, you know, and that's huh? totally cool. <laughs> What? You might just completely change your taste for something else. I recently changed my favorite type of ice cream. So, you know, it can happen. <laughs> Wait, to, from from what to what? You know, there's an ice cream store around the corner from my house that has okay. this like coconut ice cream that they just started making. And it just blew my mind. It was incredible. And I am normally a chocolate person. But whenever that ice cream is available, you better believe that that is what I will go for now. It, just Just coconut? Yeah, it's made with like young coconut, coconut milk and like coconut meat in it. And Mm. it is just refreshing and delicious and really caught me off guard. We're not talking about Mitchell's, are we? No, No. no. we're not. Wrong side, wrong side. (laughs) 
Although I'm a fan of Mitchell's, but no. This well, because because they have a young coconut and they have a, they have a coconut and a young coconut ice cream. Yes, they do. And they I have had a, lots of flavors. They do have they do have lots. I mean, it's Mitchell's is good. You know, it's good. It's like yeah, it's no. like regular ice cream. This is a curbside creamery in <sighs> Temescal. That sounds delicious. Yeah, it's delicious. So one of the combos that uh, an ex of mine really loved was any sort of coconut ice cream with chocolate sauce. Yeah, I'm a fan, but you know, I'm also. I feel like sometimes you don't want to complicate things. You're this a, ice cream you're is, a purist. I'm not, I, you know, I'm not going to make the statement I'm a purist, but I'm really digging this on its own. But I think that that type of mindset is what we're talking about here. There's this notion that like, we know ourselves, we know what we like. And what if we just accepted that like, that can be in flux? Well, it is in flux. But we didn't, what if we didn't tell ourselves stories about that? <laughs> you know, like there being something wrong. Like, I thought I knew myself. I thought I was a chocolate lover, but now I've seen the light, you know, like instead of being like, oh yeah, I really liked chocolate before. And now this is really what I'm digging. I used to really love casual sex. <laughs> exactly. And there's nothing wrong with that. And, and there's now, nothing wrong with that. <laughs> exactly. It just was right for you then. Yeah. I love it less. Well, I haven't had it in a while, but I, I love it less. <laughs> I think a lot of people aren't having it right now. Well, I, I mean, like several years. <laughs> no, I know. I know. Um, because I've learned to love, you know, the intimacy that comes from a more connected and engaged relationship. Yeah. That's now what I like more than the novelty of the casual sex. Totally. The excitement. <laughs> and I think there's the reality that different factors can speak to us at different times in our life. You know, that at certain times we might want... Um, less emotional connection and more physical gratification or pleasure. Um, and then there's also just the reality that our taste can change. And you might wake up just with a fucking hankering for chocolate. I mean, I do most days. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> My chocolate love has not gone away. It's just shifted away from the ice cream yeah. region. Yeah. <laughs> and it's, this is a, it's like a beautiful analogy for, for a lots of life. Yeah. We need to stop telling ourselves stories about who we are and and our likes and dislikes and maybe just be a little bit more open to in noticing what we enjoy and noticing what we're desiring and not judging ourselves for that. The uh, the book that I was talking about is called Anal Pleasure and Health by Jack Morin. Oh, I love that they're pairing pleasure and health. I think that we don't do that enough. And there's a picture of a butt as the cover. Also not mincing words. This is the book about the butt. Why hide that? <laughs> I think we've done our job today. Yeah. Excellent. Because I don't want to overwhelm people. And I also want people to be able to get ice cream right away if they want it. <laughs> after having listened to this conversation. I love that. We don't want to delay gratification. Though, <laughs> <laughs> though you might want to consider it next time you masturbate. Yeah, edging is a great topic. <laughs> if you want to talk about that. <laughs> there is so much. No, I think what we we could just do part part 2 and part 3 and part 4 uh, because we obviously don't have any shortage of things to talk about. But yes, ice cream is an excellent metaphor for all different aspects of sexuality. And there should be no shame in wanting to pursue pleasure and wanting to get your ice cream. Uh where can we find you? You can find me at giving the talk on Instagram. I also have a great website, givingthetalk.com. You can email me at Julia at givingthetalk.com. You noticing a theme here? <laughs> we have the we have the exact same theme, by the way. <laughs> Consistency. I love it. It's really important. What and so how can people work with you? You know, there's a lot of different ways. I love teaching. So generally I do a lot of in-person teaching. Now I've shifted my platform to doing a lot more online. I love to do um one-on-one -on -one calls with people. I am not a doctor, nor am I a therapist. I'm an educator. And so I explain that I love to help people navigate um, questions about bodies and sexuality and health and get all the information that they might not have so that they can make a really informed decision. Um, I do a lot of parenting support. So supporting parents in, in developing a sex positive culture in their home and, and supporting their kids as their sexuality is developing. I do a lot of one-on-one -on -one teaching with kids. Literally, people hire me to give their kids the talk. And I do that with a lot of adults too, because there's a lot of people in their 20s and 30s and 40s who never got good sex ed and are noticing kind of like why a lot of people come to therapy in their 30s and 40s, that there's these patterns that they're repeating that 
they don't want to repeat and they want to learn how to do things better. And the same goes for sexuality. So I work with a lot of people and give them the basic introduction to anatomy and relationship dynamics and consent and communication that they probably should have gotten when they were in fourth grade and didn't. And and for a lot of people, that's really empowering and liberating to just know what's normal and know how their body works and know how to ask what they want. And all, most of this information is available on your website. Yep, absolutely. And giving the talk on Instagram, givingthetalk.com, Julia at givingthetalk.com. That's me. I have a Twitter handle, but don't go there. <laughs> is, it give, is it giving the talk? Oh, it is. It is, yeah. <laughs> Um, what, so final question is what does love mean to you? Oh, what does love mean to me? I think love is about, it's really about genuinely meeting where you are and, and figuring out how to share your gifts and your care with each other. Beautiful. Thank you so much, Julia. Oh, thank you, Sean. All right, lovebirds, thank you for spending this time with Julia and I today. And if you like the shorter format, if you like me splitting the episodes into two, or if you hate it, send me a message, sean at thelovedrive.com. That's S-H-A-U-N. And if you love this work and this podcast, and you want to support me in continuing to bring you these guests, then I invite you to become a contributing member of this podcast and of my work by going to thelovedrive.com forward slash join, J-O-I-N, and making a small but really, really, really meaningful contribution to my work to make sure that I can keep providing and to keep supporting you. You support me and I will continue to support you. And by becoming a contributing member, you also get to join Lovebird Club, which is a private Facebook community where you can connect with like-minded folks who value love, trust, and intimacy. So if that is you, go to thelovedrive.com forward slash join, J-O-I-N. And to everybody, have a beautiful week and 